In this video, we're going to work out two more examples using the use substitution method for evaluating integrals. The first example is actually three examples in one because we're asked to evaluate in three different ways the indefinite integral of sine theta, cosine theta, d theta. So one way we could do this is to use the identity for the double angle formula for sine of two theta. Sine of two theta equals two sine theta, cosine theta. So the integrand sine theta cosine theta would be half of sine two theta. Now we still need to use a u substitution here. The input to the sine function is itself a function two theta. So we'll let u equal two theta. Take differentials of each side. So du is two d theta. And then solve for d theta being du over 2. Now let's make our substitution. In the place of 2 theta, I'm going to put u. In the place of d theta, I'll put du over 2. I still have the multiplying factor of 1 half. The 2 in the uh, denominator is going to multiply with the 2 in the denominator outside the integral. And we'll get 1 fourth integral of sine of u du. And the antiderivative of sine of u is negative cosine u. So our most general antiderivative will be negative one fourth cosine of u plus c1. Now I put a subscript on the constant here to emphasize that the constant that we get in the other two ways could be different from this constant here. Let's look at this in another way. Oh, I'm sorry. I needed to replace the u with 2 theta. Shouldn't forget that. All right. Let's look at the second method for evaluating this integral. And I noticed that cosine of theta is the derivative of sine of theta. So this looks like it could have come from a chain rule. And so we can let u equal sine of theta. Then du is cosine of theta d theta. And at this point, I might want to get used to the idea that I could just replace cosine of theta d theta with du. But I'm going to stick with our system, which would say the next thing to do would be to go ahead and uh, solve for d theta, which will be du over cosine theta. All right, make our substitution. Sine theta gets replaced with u d theta gets replaced with du over cosine theta. So the cosine theta divides out. And I'm just left with u du, which has a very simple antiderivative, 1 half u squared plus a constant. And I just put c2 to emphasize that the constant here could be different from the constant in our first antiderivative. Then go ahead and replace the u with our original value, which is sine theta. And so the antiderivative, or an antiderivative, would be 1 half sine squared theta plus c2. So there must be a third way. Well, sine theta is not the derivative of cosine theta. The derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta. But the negative sine theta, we can just think of that as negative 1 times sine theta. So we should be able to let uh, u equal cosine theta, and du is negative sine theta d theta. And solving for d theta, I get negative du sine theta. So the negative sign is not really going to bother us. So I'll have uh, sine theta times u. That's what I replaced the cosine theta with. 
And then d theta gets replaced with negative du over sine theta. And the sine theta divides out. Sine theta divided by sine theta equals 1. So I'm left with negative u du. And that antiderivative is just negative 1 half u squared plus a third constant, c3. And replacing u with cosine theta gives us negative 1 half cosine squared theta plus c3. Now, I have three different derivatives here. And they should be equivalent up to a constant. That means that these, I'm not saying that half of sine theta is the same as negative one half of cosine theta. What I'm saying is that each of these expressions should only differ by a constant. And so I could use some trig identities to actually find what constant uh, I would need to add to say negative one half cosine squared theta to get one half sine squared theta or to get negative one fourth cosine of two theta. But to just emphasize that they are just, they only differ by a constant, it's worthwhile to take a look at the graph of these functions. So we have sine of x, cosine x, and we found three antiderivatives. Minus one fourth cosine of two x, that's the green curve in the middle, the brown curve, is one half sine squared x, and the magenta curve is uh, negative one half cosine squared of x. So these curves are parallel to each other. They are only differ by a vertical shift, which is equivalent to adding a constant. In our last example, this is really a challenge example um, because we have to remember uh, a bit more about uh, geometry and or trigonometry to evaluate this. When we first look at it, it's not really clear uh, what our u value should be in making the substitution, um, but I'm going to use u equals uh, radical x. And that would be kind of my fallback in this situation. If I'm not really sure, it would be the first thing I would try. I may be wrong. I may have to go back and try u equals radical 4 minus x, or maybe u equals 4 minus x. But let's work with u equals radical x. That means u squared equals x. So taking differentials du 2u du equals dx. And then we need to look at the bounds. So for the lower bound, when x equals 1, uh, u is going to be radical 1, which is just 1. And then for the upper bound, when x equals 4, u will be radical 4, so u equals 2. So my new integral in terms of u will have bounds 1 to 2, and then I'm replacing the uh, x value under the top radical with u squared, so I get radical 4 minus u squared. The bottom radical x gets replaced with u, and then dx gets replaced with 2u du. So the u's are going to divide out. I can bring the 2 in front of the integrand, and now my integrand, or in front of the integral, now my integrand is radical 4 minus u squared du. And we don't know any technique for calculating the antiderivative of radical 4 minus u squared at this point. Uh, in second semester calculus, we will learn a technique, but we don't know that. So we have to fall back on something else. We surely want to avoid trying to use the uh, definition of the definite integral. That would be our last resort. Be extremely difficult, maybe not even possible. 
we could try to use some properties of the definite integral. Uh, the integrand is an even function, but our bounds are not opposites of each other. So the fact that it's an even function really doesn't help. And having an even function, uh, even if I had uh, opposites for bounds, it, it only uh, allows me to simplify the bounds. It really doesn't help me find the antiderivative. So maybe what I could do is look for a geometric interpretation. Let's see if we recognize this curve, y equals four radical four minus u squared. Well, if I square both sides, I'll have y squared equals four minus u squared. And then adding u squared to both sides, I'll get u squared plus y squared equals four. Now that's the equation of a circle centered at the origin with radius two. Now in the integrand, I only have the top half of the circle because the radical always denotes the positive square root. So I have a semicircle in my as my integrand and it's centered at zero, its radius is two. And so let's, for the moment, Let's uh, ignore the factor of two. We'll come back to that. But if we just look at the integral from one to two, so if I look at here, I'm just going to look at the integral from one to two of radical four minus u squared du. That's what this area is. So, how can I calculate that area? Um, it looks, uh, doesn't look like there's any uh, simple formula that we can use. And there isn't a simple formula, but if we look at it the right way, uh, it's certainly something that we can get a handle on. So if I go ahead and draw a radius then from the origin out to the circle, then I can see that I have a um, sector of a circle here. And in order to find my, the area of my shaded part, all I need to do is subtract off the area of this triangle. So let's look at that triangle. Uh, before I look at the triangle, let's recognize that in order to calculate the area of this sector, I need to know the value of this uh, central angle. And the triangle though can help me. That's the, the angle here, the larger of the, it's a right triangle, so the larger of the uh, two angles, remaining angles, is the same as the central angle of the sector. I know the hypotenuse of this tri uh, triangle is two, that's the radius of the circle. And I know that the shorter leg is one, that's given. And then using the Pythagorean theorem, I can calculate the height of the triangle as radical three. And hopefully from geometry, I recognize this as and one of my special cases when the sides are one, two, radical three, that's gotta be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so uh, this, the angle of theta is 60 degrees, which is the same as pi over three radians. All right, so let's start by calculating the area of this triangle. It's just half base times height. The base is one, the height is radical three. So we get root three over two. Now let's look at the sector. From trigonometry, we should have learned the formula one half theta r squared. Theta has to be in radians. And so if I substitute the values for theta and r, I wind up with two pi over three. Now note, I don't really need trigonometry uh, because 60 degrees means that uh, 60 is one sixth of 360. And so really this should be one sixth of the area of a circle. So the other way I could have calculated this 
is taking one sixth uh, pi r squared. And so that would give me one sixth pi times two squared, which still gives me two pi over three. All right, so now if I want to find the area of this dark blue part, which is the area of the shaded part, um, in my original drawing, I just need to take the area of the sector, subtract off the area of the triangle. And now I know uh, not the full answer because I still have the multiplying factor of two, but I can say, okay, let me just take that area of the shaded part, multiply it by two, and that is the value of the integral.